Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever wondered what these huge tanks in heavy vehicles are used for? Well, it's used for storing air, which helps in braking. So in this video, we're going to talk about pneumatic braking systems. The braking force produced by hydraulic braking system will not be sufficient enough to stop heavy vehicles. This eventually created a need for a braking system, that is a pneumatic braking system, which can produce a higher braking force. Air brakes were first developed by George Westinghouse in the 18th century for railway applications. It has been in use in automobiles since the 20th century. A typical pneumatic braking system consists of air compressor, air filter, air dryer, air reservoir, unloader valve, auxiliary reservoir, brake valve, brake chamber and lines, and brake shoe and drums. The compressor is driven by the engine. It draws and compresses the air from the atmosphere. The filter removes the dirt and the function of the dryer is to remove the moisture from the air. The unloader valve maintains the optimum pressure of the compressed air. When the air pressure reaches 900 kilopascal, it relieves the compressor and when the air pressure drops below 700 kilopascal, it re-establishes the connection with the compressor. The reservoir stores the compressed air and it ensures braking action for a while even if the compressor fails. The pressure in the reservoir is regulated by a safety valve which releases the excess pressure to the atmosphere. There is a drain valve provided at the bottom to remove any accumulation. The brake valve is operated by the driver and based on the intensity of the brake applied, it sends the compressed air to the individual brake lines for applying the brake. The brake valve consists of a spring-loaded piston with inlet and exhaust valves. When the brake is applied, the exhaust valve gets closed because of the plunger movement and the air pressure reaches the brake chambers. The air gets released through the exhaust valve when the brake is released. The brake chamber has a push rod that actuates a slack adjuster, which in turn moves the cam. The slack adjuster moves the cam placed between the brake shoes. That is, when the pressure is applied, it pushes the brake shoes against the drum, which results in stopping. Meanwhile, the cam returns to its original state when the pressure is released. Well, that's all about the components of the pneumatic braking system. But how do they work together to ensure braking? When the engine runs, it drives the compressor. The air enters the compressor through the filter and gets compressed. The unloader valve regulates the pressure and the compressed air is then sent to the reservoir. The reservoir stores and supplies the air to the brake valve and to the auxiliary systems. When the driver applies the brake, it actuates the brake valve, which in turn sends the compressed air to individual brake chambers. The compressed air pushes the brake shoe against the brake drum, which creates friction, resulting in the stopping of the vehicle. So this is how pneumatic braking works. The advantages of the pneumatic braking system are, it requires less effort, the braking distance is less, and it's easier to attach and detach the system. The disadvantage of this system include high maintenance cost, noisy operation, and possibility of leakage, which can lead to system failure. Well, that's it for this video, guys. We'll meet up again in the next one. Until then, bye.